Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be creating a subtractive synthesizer using blocks. And once again, I'm going to use Monarch as an example. And the reason why is because the Moog Model D that Monarch is based upon uh, was copied a lot of times. It served as inspiration for a lot of stuff that came after it. And for that reason, it has a very conventional signal flow that is still used by a lot of synths to this day. So the idea behind subtractive synthesis is pretty simple. Basically, we're going to use the oscillator section to create a signal that has a lot of harmonic content. And once we have that signal and we've mixed it down, uh, we're going to use the filter to remove some of that harmonic content or to subtract some of that harmonic content and that's why it's called subtractive synthesis. So the methods that we have to create a harmonically rich signal are fairly simple. Um, we can change the waveform that we're using for the oscillators and so in this particular example, the triangle waveform all the way to the left here has the least amount of harmonics, and the sawtooth uh, has the most amount of harmonics. And the other option available to us is to use FM, so we can actually have oscillator 3 affecting the frequency of oscillator 1 using the modulation section over here. and that is going to create a lot of harmonic content in oscillator one as well. So those are kind of the two methods that we use to get a signal that has a lot of harmonics. And then in the filter, uh, the cutoff point is going to determine which part of that sound we hear and which part gets kind of cut off. And we can modulate the position of the cutoff knob using the filter envelope down here and that's going to give us dynamic control of which harmonics we hear at any given point in time. So starting from a new rack, I want to try to create a system that has a similar signal flow to Monarch. And the first thing I'm going to do is add in some oscillators. I'm going to add four oscillators here. And the reason why we're doing four instead of three is because we have two types of mixers available to us. We have a crossfader, and the crossfader only accepts two signals. And we have a mixer that accepts four signals. And so I just kind of want to have uh, something to wire into all the inputs of our mixer here. It's not necessarily important, but. That's my reasoning. So I'm going to wire the oscillators one by one into our mixer over here. All right, so if we remember the signal flow that Monarch had, um, we took our oscillator section and went through a mixer, and then we connected the mixer to a filter. And so I'm going to find the filter in the bento box folder, which is second from the top here. It's the SVF filter, and SVF stands for State Variable Filter. And I'll wire the output of the mixer into the input of the filter. And then after the filter section, we had the amplitude envelope section that controls the amplitude of our signal. And we learned how to do this in the previous video where we used a VCA module filter flows into the VCA and the level knob of the VCA is going to be controlled by an envelope. So we're going to need some envelopes as well. We're going to need one envelope to control the voltage controlled amplifier and we're going to need another envelope to control the uh, cutoff point of our filter here. And then the output of our voltage controlled amplifier can be sent to our audio outs. 
All right, so we're still missing our pitch signals for our oscillator and our gate signals for our envelopes. So let's go to the utility folder and find the note in module. And the note in module, you know, we're going to take the pitch and attach it to the oscillators like we did last video. And we're going to take the gate and attach it to the envelope gate inputs. And then the last thing I want to do here is to connect the pitch from our note in module to the pitch of our state variable filter. And so what this does is it allows us to use what's called pitch tracking. And basically what pitch tracking does is it increases the cutoff point of the filter as your incoming MIDI notes get higher in frequency. And so it allows you to maintain a similar level of brightness in your sound um, across the spectrum. And to turn up pitch tracking, uh, once you have the pitch input there, uh, you can just use this knob on the bottom here. And turning it all the way up is having pitch tracking all the way on. And in the center is all the way off. And then you can actually invert it by turning to the left, which is sometimes useful, but usually we want to have it up here. All right, so what else do we need to do here? We want to have the envelopes actually modulating uh, the uh, knobs in the modules next to them. So I'm going to route this first envelope to the A input of the state variable filter. And I'm going to route the second one to the A input of the VCA. And if we turn up the amount of modulation in the VCA here, at this point in time, we can actually make a sound. Well, it's going to be a very boring sound, because if we look at how everything's set up here, all of our oscillators are set to play back sine waves. Only the first one's even turned on in the mixer at all. These other three are turned all the way down. So basically, we're going to hear the sine wave from this oscillator uh, being passed through a filter that's not going to remove any harmonic content. Not that a sine wave has any harmonic content to begin with. And then is passed directly to our VCA and our envelope is set to sustain at 100%, so it's just going to be a sine tone if I play a note right now. All right, so that's pretty boring. And let's do some programming here to uh, make a sound that's a little more interesting. I'm going to go for maybe a plucked string. And the first thing I want to do is I want to add some harmonics to our signal by changing the type of waveform that we're using here. So I'm going to give this guy maybe a sawtooth and a square wave. Um, we can change the pulse width of the square wave here to add even more harmonics. Uh, maybe I'll keep this one as a triangle, and then I'll leave the last one alone. And we can turn up all four of our oscillators so we can hear them all. And then probably you don't want them all to be playing back at the same exact frequency. So I'm going to tune down our sine wave here and have it act kind of as a sub oscillator and maybe I'll tune up the triangle a bit and then I'm going to detune these guys using the fine tuning just to get so they're not playing back at the exact same frequency so that's going to give us a somewhat more interesting oscillator section still pretty boring but um, give us something a little more interesting and then next, um, I want to change how our filter 
and VCA are interacting with each other here. So right now I have the filter cutoff point all the way up, which means that we're not really removing any harmonics from the signal, which means that we're not really doing subtractive synthesis. We're just playing back these oscillators essentially. So we want to turn down the cutoff. I'm actually just going to turn it all the way down. And um, then I'm going to turn up the amount of modulation coming from our envelope here. And so the cutoff point is going to be completely controlled by our incoming envelope. And I want to create our envelope so that it does something a little more interesting as well, because right now it has an attack time of one millisecond, and then it just sustains at the highest possible level. Um, so let's turn the sustain all the way down, and then what's going to happen with our envelope is it's going to just decay down to zero when, when it gets triggered. So it's going to send our cutoff point all the way up, and then it's going to slowly decay, or pretty quickly decay actually, in 100 milliseconds. And that's a really popular method to use, um, mainly because it really closely mimics the way that natural sounds work. So if you pluck a guitar string, for example, it's got a bunch of harmonic content, you know, so um, you can hear at the beginning a bunch of different uh, harmonics playing. And then uh, as you let the note play out, the higher harmonics are actually going to die first. You're going to lose those first from the signal, and the lower harmonics are going to continue to vibrate for a longer period of time. And so by sending our cutoff point really high at the beginning of a signal, you're getting in those higher harmonics, and then when you move the cutoff point down, it's allowing those harmonics to fade out, uh, which is exactly what happens in most naturally occurring sounds. And you know, even though we're working in an unnatural system here, you still are going to, a lot of the time at least, you're going to want to uh, keep in mind how sound works in the real world. All right, so um, the other thing I want to do is turn down the sustain on our ADSR over here, which is controlling our amplitude. I'm going to turn up the decay on both of these guys. And with a little bit of work, you can dial this in to get a pretty good string sound. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it right now. I have these detuned too much, maybe. Want to change the shape of our envelope. All right, so like I said, it's not a perfect plucked string sound, but it's actually pretty close um, for how quick we dialed everything in there. Um, so this is a very basic subtractive synthesizer, and there's a lot of potential here that we're not using. Uh, for example, all of these oscillators have FM, FM inputs, so we could be uh, getting richer signals using FM. Um, and we haven't really used any of the A or B modulation inputs for anything other than the really basic stuff like the filter cutoff and the level knob here. We also could be adding you know, more interesting modules such as LFOs, or sequencers and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of room for improvement but uh, nonetheless we have our basic subtractive synthesizer built and and it's working. <laughs>